Hi guys, today's RAS Weekends video is a guide to the brand new unit stats for RTR Imperium Serectum version 0.6. We're going to be taking a deep dive at some of these units and why you might notice subtle changes for the mod and for some of these units across the rosters. Now, it will act as a guide as well, so if you are struggling later on, come back to this video and you'll find why some of your unit stats are as they are. But without further ado, guys, let's get into the video. Now, when you come into the game, guys, you may notice that some of your units, even though they're the same as other nations' units, might have subtle unit stat changes and differences to them. Now, why is this? This is, of course, to give more unit variation across rosters, and that's what we're going to be focusing on today, those unit stat changes and why they exist and where they exist as well. And, of course, at this time, at the start of the mod, 270 BC, guys... Uh, you know, not many nations had professional standing armies. Many of them draw troops from levies from the citizen population, especially these Greeks, when war was committed. So, you know, there's a lot of differences between some of these rosters, even though they might be hoplites. You know, there might be a hoplite with much better stats than another one. And we're going to try and show that today here for us. Of course, after the reforms, guys, when you get to the reforms, you're going to have a more professional standing army, more professional troops, more standing army sort of troops and higher tier troops rather than these sort of levy early game troops. But there are multiple things, guys, that you've got to keep in mind when you're looking at these unit stats. So what we have, we have the unit type, which of course is going to change the stats. If it's a, a spearman, a swordsman, a thorakitai, if it's a cavalry, if it's a slinger, they're all going to have very different stats, aren't they? The second thing, guys, is the tier of the troops, and that's what we're going to go through very soon. So what tier of troop is it? Is it a levy troop or is it an elite troop? And then, of course, you've got the dwelling, which we'll go through as well, which is where the unit has grown up, where it originally comes from, what type of terrain and geography has made it this way. And then, finally, we have the culture as well. So the culture, of course, is what culture these units came from and why, therefore, they are as they are. So... First of all, of course, the types of units is very important. So we'll go through that to start with. So the classes of units are as follows, guys. Slingers, archers, javelin men, infantry, which is sort of swordsmen and precursor infantry, spearmen, hoplites, horse archers, and cavalry. So, of course, all those different tiers of units are all going to have different stats as their base. So, for example, the swordsman might have a little bit more attack. The spearman might have a little bit less attack, a bit more uh, defense. The slingers are going to have less morale, that sort of thing. So, of course, every different type of unit has its own base uh, range of stats where you're going to see within the game. Very simple and easy to understand. It comes from vanilla. It comes from every Total War game, and it makes perfect sense. So let's move on to tiers, guys. Now, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. And this is where it changes from vanilla. So in vanilla, the stats are all just based on what has been manually inputted. Whereas here, there are actually five tiers of troops for infantry troops. And uh, four tiers for horse archers. And five tiers again for cavalry. So we'll go through the infantry and the cavalry with examples of these troops but for infantry guys there are five tiers there's levy which is pretty much the civilian soldiers brought from the population there's standard which is a standard sort of regiment uh, there as well then there's professional so a more standing army sort of unit and then we have elite troops that were renowned for being very good in battle and then, of course, we have Veteran. And these five tiers, very commonly, not every single example, guys, but very commonly correspond to the recruitment tier for the units as well. So, for example, a Levy Hoplite, very likely going to be able to be recruited at town level 
whereas a professional hoplite will only be able to be recruited at minor city, if that makes sense, and veterans at huge cities. So that kind of corresponds. It doesn't always work out that way, but it's a very common uh, way of these guys getting recruited. And I think it works really, really well. So let's go through an example of what this means to the stats. Of course, these are just general stats of units I've taken. All the units have their own different stats, guys. So it's not exactly set in stone that it's going to be 2 plus attack for the next tier or uh, 4 plus defense or whatever like that. But it's just a rough guide to sort of these units. And we'll start with the Akonanian Hoplites. They're actually a Levy Hoplite unit. And although they look fantastic... You know, their stats, if we look at them, 34 defense is lower than the normal hoplite. 12 morale is not great, and 10 melee attack is really, really low. So let's compare them, then, to the Cretan hoplites that come in at the standard tier. So I can just hover over this. So if we, if we select these boys and then do this, you can see, instantly, four more defense... Three more morale and one more attack for the Cretan Hoplites. So instantly the Cretan Hoplites, you can see that standard tier coming in at a better Hoplite level as well. So along with that, let's then move on to, say, the Professional tier, which we're going to come down to one of my favorite looking units here. The uh, Indo-Greek Hoplites here. And you can see instantly, so if we select these boys again, so the Indo-Greeks, again, one more morale, three more attack, and one more defense. So again, it's just incremental changes. And like I say, it's not exact each time, guys. It's not exactly, oh, it's plus two attack, plus three attack. They're just generally better the next tier of units. And if we have a look down here, we'll come down to Sparta, who are having a good time down here. And we'll have a look at the next unit uh, which is an elite sort of hoplite unit, which is the Spartan Homoioi. So if we have a look at the Homoioi, you can instantly see they're a lot better. I mean, it's a very good example. 22 morale, 16 melee attack, and 48 defense, which is kind of crazy, honestly. That's very, very good. But there are very, very, very few elite hoplites in the game. I believe at the minute it's only three, the Spartan Hop. Homoyoi being one. There's a few more professional, and of course, the vast majority of the hoplites go into standard and levy because historically that's what they were, guys. Historically, that's what they were. So, next to that, then we have the veteran level, which the only way I can show it is by showing the uh, Spartan General's bodyguard because. You can see the Spartan General's bodyguard is pretty similar. It's actually just got one more uh, defense than the Homoyoi and a couple more charge. Um, but yeah, the veteran level uh, doesn't actually have any hoplites, but we do have a similar unit in the Spartan General's bodyguard over here. And they are a very, very strong unit, like I say. And like I say, in, in the vast majority of cases, it corresponds to the recruitment level at where you're going to be able to get it. So very likely you'll only be able to get the Spartan General just recruited from a huge city. So that goes over infantry tiers. Of course, guys, that's across all these Greek units. You know, it's not just the Hoplites. It's not just the Theroperoi. All of them have this same system uh, implemented to them. So if you're wondering why your Theroperoi unit might be a bit better than other places, it's probably because it's been given a different tier. Uh, it's probably a more professional tier or elite tier rather than the levy or standard tier. So yeah, um, that's why we have unit variation with these boys. One of the reasons anyway. So we'll use a cavalry as another example, guys, because it's nice and easy to show you. So with cavalry, like I say, you've got missile cavalry, Light Cavalry, Medium Cavalry, Heavy Cavalry, Elite Cavalry, and Cataphracts. So with these boys, you do have six tiers rather than five. And of course, we've got our standard Frogimoy down in that Missile Cavalry uh, range. Now, not all Javelin Cavalry guys fit into 
the missile cavalry section, which we'll show you in a section. Uh, because if there are, say, a medium or heavy javelin cavalry, like, say, the Pontic heavy cavalry, they're going to be in one of those higher tiers rather than this low-tier javelin cavalry. But these boys, yeah, 9, 9, and 12 defense. So 9 morale, 9 melee attack, and 12 defense. So you can see a very light cavalry unit. But then if we come across to, say, the Theroporoi cavalry, which are over here. I don't know why it's spread them out like that. That's a bit stupid. I'm not very happy with that. But anyway, you can see instantly just a big difference. 17 defense rather than 12. They get 13 morale rather than 9. And 10 melee attack as well. The same amount of javi attack, but that's fine. But these guys, you can see instantly, they are light cavalry. Don't have much armor. Got a Thuria shield. Shield buffs popping up once again. Thank you for joining us, my friend. Um, but then next to them, we of course have um, the medium cavalry, which we've just got for this one, the standard Espido Foroi. So this is Spido Foroi. You can see instantly a big difference, a big leap up in stats. 27 defense rather than 17 because they've got armor now and shields. 15 morale. Uh, rather than 13 and 11 melee attack. And they do get a few Javis, this Espido Foro. Remember our Greek AOR units video where we went through how the Javis uh, work in terms of the Espido Foro and why some of them don't have Javis and that. If you want to know the difference between different Espido Foros, go and check that Greek AOR unit video out. But next uh, up, we have Heavy Cavalry and Elite Cavalry. So... Let's make our way over to the Seleucids. And, uh, no, sorry, over to Bithynia, in fact, should I say. And here we have the Bithynian Noble Cavalry. And these boys are a heavy cavalry unit. Oh, I have missed you, Bithynia. I do love uh, the Thracians and the Bithynians. But if we have a look at the Espido Fora, you can see there's not a huge difference. It's mainly just that extra morale. Uh, there so you can see the difference in tiers between different nations and stuff again Like I say, it's different between the different tiers and nations So even though this one counts as a heavy cavalry unit It might it isn't that much different in its stats and that you can see that across different rosters There is a merge here and a blurring of the lines. It's not set lines guys It's just what they're categorized as and on from them we then have the elite cavalry. So we'll come across to the Seleucids for that tier. And over here, we can just have a look at the Espido Foroi stats because, of course, they only had, they just had one less defense, I believed, than the heavy cavalry of Bithynia. But let's have a look at the Hetai Roy. You can see instantly a much more better morale, better melee attack. Yeah, a lot better melee attack and a lot better couple of extra defense. And they do look fantastic, don't they? The Hetai Roy always. Very nice, indeed. And then, of course, the final tier is the Cataphracts. The big boys. The big boys on the map. And instantly, yeah, very, very good stats. 38 defense, 21 morale, 15 melee attack. And, yeah, the Cataphracts rounding out a very glorious tier of cavalry that we've seen there today. So, that is a real quick rundown of why you might notice some big stat changes between, say, the same unit. For example, the Indo-Greek hoplites are much better than the Akarnanian hoplites because the Akarnanians are levy boys and the Indo-Greeks are professional. So that makes a big uh, difference to some of the stats in the game, and I hope that makes a lot of sense, guys. But let's move on to the second, sorry, the third thing that affects stats, and that is the dwelling. Now, if you know Vanilla Game, you will know of the dwelling. You may just never have heard of it because it's never explained in game. The dwelling is the type of terrain these units are born out of. The type of geography where they originally come from. Now, this doesn't have ties to culture. It's just a geographical and climate modifier. So, for example, in Vanilla... If you get a camel unit, it will have a bonus in deserts. And that comes directly from the dwelling stat. Now, it's a hidden stat, like I said, so you won't have seen it or heard of it. But, for example, 
the Germanics will get a bonus in woods. And that is because they will have a Germanic dwelling. So all these different dwellings give different bonuses to units based on where they originally grew up. I'll give you some examples. So we have African, Egyptian, Barbarian, Thracian, Celtic, East, Near East, Iranian, Germanic, Greek, Cretan, Anatolian, Italic, and Steppe. So far, with more to be added probably in future. Now, the Greek one will apply to all these standard Greek hoplites in these standard rosters. So if you are playing as the Aetolians and you get a Greek hoplite, it's going to be a Greek roster, uh, Greek dwelling for those boys. And it just adds various bonuses and changes to the factions and to the units based on their dwelling. For example, this normally comes with bonuses in woods or bonuses in deserts, bonuses in um, snow, that sort of thing. Those extra bonuses that we see. So I'll give you some specific examples, guys. A unit with the dwelling type African will get two bonuses in desert, um, two bonus attack in desert, minus two in forest, and minus four in snow. And they will also have a minus two heat modifier, so they're not going to get as fatigued in the hot climate of the desert. I'll give you another example, guys. For example, the Thracians get a two bonus in scrubland, like, so like scrubby land, um, minus two in sandy land, three in the forest, plus three, and plus one in snow as well. So you can see how these dwelling types will affect the units over time and how it will affect how they play as well. So if you see a unit with bonus in woods, bonus in snow, that is coming directly from the dwelling type. And I think it makes sense, doesn't it? It really does make sense because, of course, you know, units that have grown up fighting in the desert or have, you know, been formed to fight in the desert should have a bonus in deserts. You know, Germanic units that have been born in the forests of Germania should have a bonus in the forest. And I think that's really, really cool. It just adds a bit of variation. And that, like I say, it's already in the vanilla game as well, but it just adds a bit of extra variation there. So the final thing that will affect the unit stats, guys, is the culture which the unit is born from. So, spoiler alert, there are going to be a few more different cultures in RTR Imperium Serectum version 0.6. I can't go into exactly what those are for now. Very many different extra cultures, shall we say. <laughs> I'm trying really hard not to reveal anything yet on that. But for example, say an Egyptian unit is going to have a different culture to a Thracian unit, which will have a different culture to a Celtic unit, nonetheless. So the combination of that culture element and dwelling element uh, combines to make very unique units based on the culture and dwelling they come from and the tier that they're at as well. It really does alter those stats. Now, the cultural difference is very different to the dwelling in one sense, with the dwelling just giving bonuses based on the map terrain. The culture gives bonuses and negatives in general as a percentage. So I'll give you a couple of examples now. When I say percentage, guys, I mean ratio. So for example, if we take one as the general value for everything, for the attack, for what the attack stat says, etc. If it's one is 100% of that 22 morale, for example. If we took a Numidian unit, they would actually have 1.15 that infantry attack. Only one uh, cavalry attack modifier, but a 1.8 infantry charge modifier. So they're really good on the charge. So if you compare that to, say, a Greek unit in general, they just have one and one, but 0.98 cavalry charge so they have slightly worse cavalry charge but if we have a look at the macedonians for example they get a 1.08 bonus to cavalry charge which is the best on the chart that i can see so they get extra cavalry charge they've got better cavalry than other cultures but slightly worse infantry shall we say their infantry defense is at 0.9 so slightly worse infantry defense for them. If we look at the Spartan culture, 
their cavalry attack modifier is 0.8. So really low. But their infantry attack is 1.1. And their infantry defense is 1.2. So you can see that cultural difference, guys. I can't give you every single example. We'd just be rattling off stats <laughs> for ages. It's going to make a difference to these units in general as well. They're going to have different bonuses and negatives based on what culture they come from. Now, these, like I say, are generally small tweaks. So don't be playing the game and complaining that Oh, I'm playing a Spartan campaign and I'm fighting Macedonians. And it must be that 0.1 extra difference between infantry defense or something like that that's making a big difference. No, you know, lots more things will have a higher impact on the outcome. But of course, it does make an impact overall, especially long drawn out battles. Uh, and it makes you know which units you want to use and it's just use common sense guys you know macedonians are going to be good with cavalry spartans are going to be good with infantry that sort of thing so yeah it does make a big difference and that combined with the dwelling will change the unit stats based on the battlefield and of course what culture those units are as well which i think is fantastic so we've gone through everything guys that changes the unit stats in really finite detail so i hope you did make sense of that. I hope that did make sense to you, if I can speak properly. There's one final thing we've got to go over, and that's just the generals. So, you know, of course, a lot of factions have cavalry generals, but some will also have infantry generals. And like we say, they are kept to a very low number because, uh, you know, they, we don't want general stacking to be a thing. I mean, I general stacked a while ago in... Uh, <laughs> In my Seleucid campaign, check that out. Um, and uh, Ahal wasn't too happy about that. But yeah, <laughs> it's to make you general stack slightly less. And, you know, they have really low upkeep as well. So they're really good for governing cities if you're using a governor to govern your cities. But of course, you have the infantry one as well for a few nations like Massalia gets some of these Sparta gets some of these but for most of the Greek nations you're looking at a Spartan cavalry bodyguard and the same bonuses and negatives apply to these guys as well based on the culture and dwelling from which they come from just to say so guys I hope that has made sense to you I hope that that has helped you out understanding why some of these unit stats might be a little different from some of the others when you load in the game. Like, for example, your hoplites might be different from another unit's hoplites, and that is because of this big difference in culture and dwelling. And I hope that has made sense, and the tiers, of course, as well. Comment down below um, any questions, anything else you want to ask, all that sort of thing. Make sure you like and subscribe, guys. And check out my other unit roster videos that will come up on the screen very soon. So thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure. Please like and subscribe. It really does help the channel out. And I will see you all again on the next video.